It's still with me, running through all of the biggest stories of the day. Sparked uh, online editor Tom Slater. Uh, good morning to you morning. once again. Um, question we're asking today, we've had some quite huge debates already, have we not, uh, about this uh, smoking ban uh, that the government wants to bring. This is Rishi Sunak's big announcement at party conference uh, last October. But MPs are going to vote today uh, to ban anyone. We know it's going to go through, despite probably about 50 Tory MPs uh, who are going to uh, vote against, uh, to ban anyone born since January the 1st, 2009, including January the 1st, 2009, from ever being able to buy cigarettes legally. Uh, so I do want to hear from you. Do you support or do you oppose the ban? And tell us why. You can give us a call on 0344 499 text on 8722 or get in touch on X at Talk TV. Calls are charged at the national rate. Text costs one standard network rate message. Um, love to hear your thoughts. We had some great calls on that and some great messages. Largely people opposed. I think you and I were both rather surprised earlier mm. to have a Tory MP on who says he's Massive, you know, free marketeer, anti-big government, government out of our lives, and then said, first of all, this is James Sunderland, he would vote, um, he would abstain, because it was a government measure, although it's not on a whip, and then he said he might vote to support it. I mean, I've got to say, brain, what the hell's going on? Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have been surprised, really, in a way, because <laughs> this is what the Tory party does, isn't it, is that they claim to have they talk all of these game. principles on all kinds of issues, and then when push comes to shove, they fall into line with the orthodoxy. This is another example of that. Um, I, I genuinely find this quite depressing. First of all, just from the perspective of someone who genuinely does believe in individual freedom, I think if you're an adult, you should be able to decide how to live your life. As long you as it doesn't... It, when the when, harm when principle. it imposes on other exactly. people, then there's a trade-off and then that should be a matter... And that's, the, that's, the, that's John Stuart Mill, that's the classic liberal th thing, if it, as long as it doesn't impact on anyone else. And this, we're at the point now where it really does not impact on exactly. anyone else. Exactly. I'm, I'm very so, anti-smoking. I love the 2007 smoking ban. I thought was brilliant. I mean, it was indoors, as an ex-barmaid, as an ex-waitress, and working in offices where people were you know, sitting there smoking fags, next, left, right and in front of me at six in the morning on the evening standard. It was absolutely horrific. Well, the smoking ban was also something where things were sort of trending in that direction anyway yeah. as well. Do you, I mean, and not, I think pe you people age, should Do you remember be... people, vote, people smoking in cinemas and on planes? No, that was slightly before my time. All right, just all right. But, um, all right, all right. Not trying to get, can we not have such young people on the show? <laughs> we used to sit on the tube in yeah. London, underground, in a, in, a, in a tunnel, with people smoking. But also, it's mind-blowing now. Before the smoking ban, I could easily have seen a situation in which, you know, you'd have places which were smoking, places that were non-smoking. I thought the vast majority probably would have been non-smoking. But I think the point is is that, yes, it's a question of free... It's also a question of, what, if your main concern is health, really, is this something that we need to be too yes. obsessed about? Particularly in the context of them also making moves towards clamping down on vaping, yes. which is also in this bill. Or at least giving the powers to the health secretary to clamp down on it if he wants to is also in this bill. I just think it makes no sense. And I think it genuinely produces a less free, less live and let live... Yeah. Less Mark, easygoing yeah. society. Health doesn't have to be everyone's no, priority. That's the thing. We, that's the whole long, point. Yeah, we need to keep every single 83 year old alive yeah. for as long as possible at the expense of everyone else's freedom. That, no, that's not how life should work. I used to be very nanny state, actually. Um, I'm not libertarian. I would say li like, yeah, I'm liberal. Um, but again, as, I, I think there's perfectly justifiable, uh, you know, passive smoking justifications for the, the ban in 2007 on people smoking in offices and in enclosed areas, public spaces. Absolutely, I'm fully in favour of that. As were most smokers I know who were saying, you know, it means I cut down, I have to go outside and have a crafty cigarette in the rain outside, but it means I smoke less. Um, made pubs and clubs much more pleasant to go to. You don't sort of have to, you know, re wash everything out for the next two weeks. But um, but this, I do think this just goes way too far and I don't see how it's tenable. And as one of our callers, Roy, mate, pointed out, you are looking at this impossible to enforce you know, two adults going mm -hmm. to a shop, one's legally allowed to buy and one isn't because they were born in 2008, one born in 2009, um, without ID cards. Yeah. So it's a slippery slope to ID cards. I think it's a slippery slope when it comes to what next is banned, because, you, know, mm -hmm. you know, cakes, sugar, and you know, it... anything else you actually... Wine, they're, they're coming for our booze, folks. They're come... Listen, you, you, you're going to have to fight hard to take my, <laughs> take my white wine and my fizz away from me, guys. But why wouldn't they, you know? Yeah, it's exactly. the next logical step. And also the black market. I remember when, the, market, when yeah. the smoking the age... taxation went... lost. Exactly. I remember when I was about 16 or a little bit more when the smoking age went so up that to 18. last year? Um, no, exactly. Not quite. But a long time ago now... you the young card? Oh, God, God, how long ago was that? Like 16 years ago? Um, but <laughs> it was... I was just over 16 when they put the smoking age up to 18. So we went from buying cigarettes legally to just buying them illegally. Yeah. That's what we did. We went and bought... And you still managed to get them? Yeah. I mean, I knew friends at 14 who were getting them. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's, it's quite you bizarre, know. isn't it? Well, I mean, I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this. Uh, do give us a call in particular. 03444991000 is the number to call. Let's talk about the small matter of World War Three. 
Um, I can't believe we got to that next. Um, but um, we, we have uh, had the extraordinary situation. We've got Ben Wallace, uh, who is, of course, the, uh, the former Defence Secretary, speaking out, as he has done on a lot of issues in terms of our defence spending, our ability to uh, protect our, not just our nation, but our allies, Ukraine, uh, Israel and others. But he has said that Iran is acting like a bully and must be hit back twice as hard. Uh, this as Israel is preparing whatever their reaction will be in retaliation to that missile attack on Saturday night from Tehran. Now, Rishi Sunak has joined Joe Biden. He's got a phone call with Netanyahu today, but it's warning the Israeli Prime Minister you know, you need to tone this down. We need to not, not you know, basically upgrade everything. But there's no doubt at all, the Iranian attack, the 101, sorry, 201 missiles and, and, uh, and drone attack on Israel and on civilian targets, that was a huge upgrading in terms of their retaliation for the attack uh, by the Israelis on that uh, Damascus uh, uh, you know, uh, diplomatic compound which, had, which killed uh, you know, revolu Iranian Revolutionary Guard uh, generals and, and other senior staff. That was a military target. And of course, Israel would have known that Iran would hit back. But Iran has massively upgraded this. It is a matter of luck and a matter of the Allies' support for, you know, providing the technology, in the case of America, the Iron Dome uh, defence system, but also American, British, French and Jordanian and other jets shooting down uh, those, uh, uh, those, those missiles that, that we have not seen massive loss of civilian life in Israel. In those circumstances, would the same people demanding that their, everyone, you know, holds fire, would they be making the same demands? Because if, if any country sent 300 ballistic missiles and drones into my country, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. I would expect retaliation. I mean, it's been interesting watching people flip. So they've gone in the space of 24 hours from saying that it was completely understandable, if not justified, for Iran to respond to Israel. They haven't admitted it, but we all know it was them hitting the consulate in Syria, which is full of all of these Iranian generals and so on, saying that, of course, it's going to elicit a response. Then after Iran sent hundreds of bombs, of ballistic missiles, of drones carrying, carrying explosives and so on, Israel's way, that it's outrageous and wrong an escalation in order yeah. for Israel to respond. But that's how this debate has taken has taken place. People act as if Israel is the only one who can act. Yeah. But also that Israel's yeah. action in, in, in attacking that Damascus compound was completely out of the blue. Yeah. And just an unprovoked just attack, felt like despite the fact that everyone openly, the same people openly state that Iran is, is funding both Hamas, mm -hmm. the Houthi rebels in, uh, in Yemen, and the Hez Hezbollah rockets that are being fired from Lebanon every single day with, uh, you, know, you know, tens of thousands of Israelis forced out of their homes in northern Israel. No, don't worry about that. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. They can carry on doing that. But it would be somehow provocative for Israel to act against the generals ordering those, those proxy yeah. attacks. Well, that's been the message, isn't it? People have acted throughout this conflict that it would be provocative and outrageous for Israel to defend itself. That's kind of been where we've ended up. Now, that's not to say that anyone should be blasé about the prospects of this conflict spreading of mm. other powers being sucked in. I don't think there's civilians in either Israel or Iran who are exactly happy about the current state no. of affairs and want their own sons and daughters to be sent into conflict. But the point is, is that we need to recognise who started this, why this war in Gaza is taking place, why Yeah, but then you're, strike people will place. say, no, but, you know, October the 7th wasn't the start of this. You go mm. back to 19, you know... 75, 45, I mean, you, you know, go back 2,000 years sometimes. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can be, you know, we can, at least we can say with some confidence that when, say, Israel struck that consulate recently, it wasn't out of the clear blue sky. We know that they've been... And yes, there's a lot been made about the fact, and it is significant, that this is the first time Iran has yeah. struck Israel from its own territory yeah. and its own military, but it has been funding and backing... Exactly. Those I have to say, I'm, I'm, I, I was... I was most uh, heartened to see the, the uh, Western alliance actually standing by our ally Israel in these circumstances. You know, we're very clear about Iran and the threat. And I, I've been I was saying on the show yesterday, absolutely fascinated to see the people who are on, on the side of the Iranian mullahs who, who, as a matter of policy, mm. beat young women to death for not wearing a scarf on their head correctly. I mean, if those are your allies, yeah, I'm not sure I feel the need to. We'll worry about your opinion, I have to say. Um, let's also talk about um, uh, Donald Trump.
He yeah. um, is uh, back in court. He's on court on a regular basis. This is actually the start of a trial there uh, in New York. This is over hush money paid to the porn star Stormy Daniels, uh, as preventing her from, as she claimed, admitting that she was saying that she had an affair with him, that he has always denied this, ahead of the 2016 election. Remember what happened then? Oh, yeah, Donald Trump won. Uh, among the various charges, these are the first criminal charges for a former US president. Among the charges, it's not that he paid this money, totally entitled to pay someone not to tell a story to the papers, uh, but uh, the this money was came out of campaign funds, and that uh, it, the 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 basic the business uh, accounts were. Uh, were altered to make it appear that this was a, a campaign fund, whereas in fact it was a payment to his lawyer uh, to pay his lawyer back for paying uh, was it $130,000 to uh, the porn star. Now, it's going to trial. We've already... This is just the section where they're actually trying to select the jury. But we did have Donald Trump... I mean, just being Donald Trump, shall we say, <laughs> uh, outside court. Um, let's have a little watch to listen of what Donald Trump had to say as he arrived for a long day in court yesterday in New York. Radical persecution. This is a persecution like never before. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. And again, it's a case that should have never been brought. It's an assault on America. And that's why I'm very proud to be here. This is an assault on our country. Nobody has ever seen anything like it, Tom. In a way, he's right. I mean, that's the thing, as far as this is somewhat unprecedented. It's not to say that there haven't obviously been politicians who've been persecuted over time, but in recent times, the way in which the law has been so willfully weaponised against a particular political candidate, and across so many different cases, and the, the, this is the problem with Donald Trump, is that there's a lot of things you could get him on. He's not a squeaky clean character by any stretch of the imagination. I think he's probably banged to many rights on these... all of the different four court cases he's going to face. It doesn't mean he shouldn't have a fair trial. I'm only allowed to say that because it's not sub judice in the same way yeah. that it is in this country. Uh, I mean, but this this particular indictment is, good, is a case in point as far as what he's accused of basically, was basically a bit of creative accounting to try and obscure these payments that were being but made. Yes, but, but it is against the law. No, absolutely. My point is that um, what they then did was they took what should be basically a sort of misdemeanour and then inflated it into a kind of felony. Mm. And, and many legal experts in the US have gone over this and said this is kind of cooked. Even liberal outlets have yeah. said this is a little bit too creative. So this is the problem. Yes, he might be banged to rights on one thing, but then it gets blown up into something else. And, and it's the decision it. to and actually bring thing. this case. And that's one of the things, isn't it? It's like, it's, I, I think it's perfectly possible to hold both ideas in yeah. your head at the same time, which is that he, he may well have done this, he may well be guilty. It is perfectly reasonable that there should be a court case about this. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, that the decision to prosecute him in all of these cases is actually politically motivated. Yeah. And, and have... the motivation is to try and prevent him from becoming US president. However, it does appear that certainly with all the charges, that has actually done not, not only done nothing to hurt his chances, it's boosted his chances. He's playing the martyr. He does this very well. Mm. It's boosted his fund, uh, funding for his campaign. This, however, will have an impact in terms of you have to sit in court every day. You can't go out campaigning. Uh, you can't even attend a Supreme Court hearing uh, regarding another case, which seems to me to be an absurd ruling from the judge and clearly politically minded, could perhaps be banned from attending uh, his son's um, uh, high school graduation, which is, you know, a very, very, very big thing uh, uh, for, for American parents. And it just seems to me... Um, that those are vindictive things that, 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 that are going to play very badly with the general public. If I'm feeling sorry for Donald Trump, you've probably gone too <laughs> far, is what I would say. Um, but, you know, he did once say, you know, 2016, and I don't even think he was joking. He was above the law. He'd get away with anything. He yeah. could, you know, I could, I could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and get away with it, he said. Well, I think what this... We've also got to think about the consequences for American politics more broadly because this is ushering in a new era in which whatever party is elected, they're just yeah. going to pursue the other one through the courts. And you've got district attorneys who are elected in Manhattan, for instance, where this trial is taking place, on the ticket of, I will be the man to bring down Donald Trump. Yeah. This is a politicisation of the law. But they do, but it has been. But it has been. And, I, and that's one of the things I think is fatally flawed in the American judicial system, that, they, that it is a highly politicised system. On this system. scale, though, I think it's something on we haven't scale. seen. I don't because the whole... Out, I'd like to point Trump out that this was started by Hillary Clinton and her, her fans and campaigners mm -hmm. in 2016, where they argued, and again, and we saw this in the UK, all the, all the, all the people on the Remain side, not all, but a lot of people on the Remain side, certainly in Labour, saying that basically the, 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 the 2016 Brexit referendum had been uh, yeah. bought and paid for by the Russians uh, and the like, and lies, um, and, and you know, voters didn't know what they were doing. Um, and we saw that absolutely outrageous undermining of our democratic vote. And we've had the same thing a few months later in November 2016, but Donald Trump got elected fair and square. And there are still so many people online who still seem to think that basically Vladimir Putin 
won that election yeah. for Donald Trump, whereas all the evidence is very, very clear that actually all of that, those Russian bots actually started after he became president. Now, I've no doubt that Vladimir Putin was very delighted that Hillary Clinton didn't become president and that, and that uh, uh, Trump, Donald Trump did. But that's not to say that he was able to interfere with that election. Absolutely. And I think so much of that comes down to that refusal to concede that vote. I mean, Donald Trump was threatening not to concede the 2016 vote before he knew that he'd won it. So it's yeah. not to say that he's um, the principled person here. But there's so much blame to go around on both sides. We're now in a situation where the leadership of both the main parties are denying election results just in slightly different formats. Yeah. And that there is a not insignificant section of their own bases who believe that either 2016 was stolen by the Russians yeah. or 2020 was stolen by Joe Biden's and Venezuelan voting machines well, or whatever I mean, it was. Yeah. So this is a big yeah. problem. But, but exactly, but again, America. people can't think it, don't think it just started with what Donald Trump's behaviour post the 2020 election was absolutely appalling and terrible. But you know, so was so was Hillary Clinton's behaviour after 2016. Not, not quite as bad, but it but it was bad. And I, you know, look, I did, did I did I want Jeremy Corbyn to get elected in 2019? I did not. Um, but would I have accepted the election of the verdict of the British people? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in the next election this year, you know, I have, I have opinions on who I want to get elected and not elected, but I would accept the outcome of a democratic vote. If you don't accept that premise, and if you don't have, you know, the, 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 the you know, calm, peaceful transition of power, you know, you may as well go and live in Russia in yeah. that temperature. It's, it's very dangerous. Um, let's also talk about breaking news in the last half an hour. This is fantastic news. Uh, I'm very, very pleased about this. Um, we've got the, the case involving uh, the Michaela Community School. This is the school that was run by the utterly brilliant and wonderful Catherine Burble Singh. Um, much, much maligned, but a hero for many of us in terms of her outspoken views and her no-nonsense attitude about this low, the low expectations of, of, uh, of many teachers, of, uh, of children from poorer backgrounds in schools. And she has turned that around with a school that has, yes, incredibly strict discipline, but nevertheless has incredibly good results for children who are on free school meals coming from homes where parents don't speak English, uh, from housing estates where they've got drug dealers on the estate. She is turning their lives around. She's an absolute hero uh, and should be uh, for this entire country. But she faced an extraordinary legal challenge against her school's ban on prayer rituals. A ban brought in because, and we talked to her on the show about it, because um, uh, basically a number of people started praying uh, in the playground and were basically bullying, encouraging, exerting pressure on other students, Muslim students, uh, to join their, their prayer ban and to join in Ramadan fasting and the like. And she said this was unreasonable and they brought in a prayer ban. They didn't have rooms where kids could uh, pray. There was, simply isn't the room in the school. Well, a Muslim student, we're told, brought a legal challenge. A Muslim student's parents, an activist, brought a, music, a legal challenge against the school, um, saying this was uh, basically a uniquely affecting Muslim faith. Uh, with prayer as a key pillar of the faith. And uh, this morning, that legal challenge was lost, I'm delighted to say. And sense, common sense has prevailed. This is a great victory for common sense, isn't it? Absolutely, and also a great victory for schools that want to remain secular, that don't want to become subject to the demands of whether it's, it's pupils openly, or teachers. It's openly or a non-faith school. Absolutely, and all, the point that um, Catherine Burble has been making very powerfully is that when, particularly when you're in a very multicultural, multiracial, multi-religious area, as her school in Wembley is, is the fact that you really need to find ways to make sure that kids don't kind of fracture into their own little silos. So they yeah. do things that try and bring them all together, whether it's all having lunch together. They all eat vegetarian because of the fact that that is more or less what all of them can yeah. eat, despite their respective religious diets and so on. And she was saying that this demand for a prayer room, which they couldn't fulfil anyway, yeah was leading to a kind of general demand that kids, that the Muslim kids be more pious by the more conservative kids yeah. and whatever. And she was like, we have to put a stop to this, precisely because we want to be one yeah. school community. You're not a Muslim pupil up. or a Hindu pupil mm -hmm. or, a, or a Christian pupil, but you're just a pupil at Michaela. That should be something that That's anyone can get behind. That's the whole point of school behind. uniforms as well. Exactly, you're just, yeah. you're, that, that is your identity when you're at school. I think, she, I mean, she stood firm on this one. I'm so pleased. But again, huge cost of this to the courts, huge cost to the school dealing with all of this, you know, and a nonsense. If you don't like it, move your kids to another school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but brilliant stuff. Well done, well done. Big victory there for uh, uh, Catherine Burble Singh. Uh, right now, uh, let's get back uh, though to uh, what we've been asking you on social media and on air uh, about MPs who will vote today uh, to ban anyone born since 2009 from ever being able to buy cigarettes legally. It's all certainly that bill will uh, go through and become law, uh, despite some 50 Tory MPs expected to vote against it. I want to know: Do you support or do you oppose the ban? Tell us why. Uh, give us a call on 0344 499 1000. 
text on 87222 or get in touch on X at Talk TV. Uh, Patricia says uh, the government wants to rule our lives. I'm not a smoker, but let the people decide if we want to smoke. It's amazing how many people like like me, aren't smokers opposed to this. Kareem says, it's not up to the dictators to decide what we can do. And William says, it's completely unenforceable. They'll just start an entirely new drugs and black market. You've also been getting in touch on the phones. Do keep those calls coming in. Let's go to Carlos, who is in London. Hello, Carlos. Oh, hello. The impact of smoking uh, is immense. Uh, working for the NHS, I see uh, uh, all the consequences of smoking. Yeah. It's not just cancer, it's respiratory diseases, it's the effect of unborn, uh, on unborn uh, fetuses. Yep. It's, it's, it's vast, it's immense. Smoking and is also, terrible, they're cancer sticks. I mean, I see a pregnant woman smoking, I mean, we should all I mean, castigate them. I mean, I'm sorry, you, you, you've got, if you're choosing to have a baby, you've got to stop smoking, end off, nothing to discuss. I hate smoking, I don't want to be around it. However, um, however, they, people are allowed to do things that are bad for their health. We're allowed to drink, we're allowed to eat too much. People are allowed to do dangerous sports. Why should the government decide what we are and what we are not allowed to get ill from? Well, when we talk about the NHS, we talk about the budget of the NHS yep. and how the NHS needs to be more funded. Now, the amount of money that we spend uh, the amount of resources that we spend uh, fighting uh, unnecessarily uh, 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 diseases that could be easily uh, avoided yeah. is the amount of money that we could be spending fighting other things. I don't, like, of course, I mean, absolutely. And, 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 and look, I think we have a duty, a, a duty of care to some limited extent to sort of not impose costs on other people. However, smokers also have the decency to die younger so they don't claim their pension for as long. No, that's no, I'm sorry, that's the reality is that actually the biggest saving we get from smokers, you say saving not a cost, is that they don't live as long. And that's why it's crazy for people to smoke, in my view. Uh, and therefore, they don't claim their pension as long uh, and other benefits as long. So although they might cost us extra from their diseases, overall, and the taxes that are paid, um, VAT and, and tobacco duty, they're, they're net contributors in that sense. They're not drag. Well, but here's the thing. Well, they, if they, you're going they, to use they, the they, argument they, about they, smoking, Carlos, you can also use that they, argument about people being obese. So are we going to have laws to stop people getting obese as well? Is that well, acceptable? The, 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 the issue here is, the issue here is, there's also, is a smokers, is passive smokers. Mm -hmm. well, we've dealt with people, that. The smoking ban dealt with that. Who suffer, who suffer because of the nasty habit of smoking. No, 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 we've dealt with passive smokers. You and, don't have to choose, to, you, don't, you don't get forced to be in a room with someone smoking ever anymore. That's rubbish. What about people who are obese? Should we also but bring they, in a law to stop people buying fatty they, food and sugary food? But they're not, but the, the, the fundamental thing is, the fundamental thing is, if you say, OK, I will smoke and I will, I will spend resources and I will waste resources that should be uh, uh, used uh, uh, fighting uh, uh, diseases that people get onto themselves, not because they want to, but because it's just happened, uh, it's ridiculous. No, you cannot uh, Carlos, say that you want the, you've that made you don't that want point. Carlos, you've made that, that, point. You've made that point three times. I'm asking you, what, where does this lead? If you can make that logical argument about smoking, why can you not also make that argument about people eating fatty or sugary food and people getting obese? Obesity is a massive cause of, uh, well, of, of cost the NHS. A complex, it's a complex disease. Some it's people, not a disease. People, Obesity is not a disease. Some people might get, might get uh, obese because of eating, and some people might get obese because of genetic propensity. OK, right. A, it's not so a disease. A, a, B, most deal, people who are... To... Carlos, Carlos, mm -hmm. please do not call up my show and talk nonsense. Most people who are obese are obese because they eat too much and they don't exercise enough, but largely because they eat too much. Simple question. If you could justify a smoking ban because of the cost to the NHS of people having diseases as a result of smoking, can you also move to justify a ban on lots of unhealthy foods because of obesity? Yes or no? I, I say to you, the, 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 in terms of the applicability of what people put in their mouths, it's a, it's a different story. It's a, we should not uh, uh, put the two things together. Smoking is one issue and eating is another issue. And the, the public health people put it's them like together. It's like oranges and apples. It's two different things. 
I, look, I, 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 I say, I, com comparing the two as putting as, as the same thing, it's not that it's I, not I right. don't think they're the same thing. However, the public health people who want to ban smoking, exactly, they do, they do also want to ban, you know, the sale of fast food and limit, uh, limit what the sugar content in fizzy drinks and things like that as well. They absolutely think of it as the same thing. And if the impact on the NHS is the same, why not treat it the same on the same logic? Well, the, the impact is not the same. A, a, a smoking has gigantic ramifications. It's not just... It's, it's, uh, there are more obese people in this country than smokers. There are more obese a, people than it's smokers. It's cardiac problems. It's a, people can have a heart issues because of smoking, respiratory issues because of smoking, cancer issues because of smoking. Yeah, and the same with obesity. There are all kinds of things. Uh, it, it's a much more complex reality, no, and I, it's a very expensive reality. The, if you have the, the, biggest, cancer, the biggest impact on the NHS will be from obesity and not from smoking in the coming years. I can assure you of that. I'm, I'm just fascinated with the logic of this, Carlos. Great to talk to you. You held your own. Thank you very much indeed. That's Carlos in London. Quick word from Tom Slater on this. This is one of my worries as someone who was very nanny state until a lot of these. Really, I mean, really like, yes, these things are absolutely wrong. I don't like them. I don't do them. Therefore, they should be bad. And then realised, oh, hold on a minute. They're coming for my stuff too. So as much as I hate smoking, I really, I really think it's insane. Genuinely, I think it's insane to smoke. I think it's insane. It is an absolute madness to cut years off your life for smoking. It's like glass of wine now and then, mm. absolutely worth it. But yeah, that's my view. But it's not my business what someone does if it's not impacting on me or anyone else. I don't want people smoking around their children. I think we need to have some issues dealt with about that. But, but this is the thing. The people who are opposed to the smoking, they seem to be very, very keen on banning everything else as well. Absolutely. And there'd be plenty of people who also think it's insane to even have the odd drink. But that's the point, you just make your own choices. We're adults, we should be trusted yeah. to do so, and we shouldn't have it dictated yeah. by the government and, or and, the and chief And maybe living to the else. last possible moment of your life, but mm. being utterly miserable and skinny and healthy may not be our top priority.